The most brilliant writer isn't necessarily the one that's going to get traction. You need all the other parts of the business, the other parts of the whole. If we put together a list of how not to break in to the entertainment industry, what would five things be? Five. How not to get work. How not to get work by Carol Kirshner. Five ways. Don't put in the time to develop your craft. Don't reach out to people to find out if they know someone who could introduce you, not a decision maker, but just somebody that might be willing to meet with you, Zoom coffee for 10 or 15 minutes. Somebody who does not want to enlarge their community of relationships. Um, something else not to do is don't be a jerk. And we were just talking about this. Don't ask somebody you don't know to read your script or get your script to Steven Spielberg or somebody else. Um, don't be generous. You need to be generous. There's so many generous people in this business. The perception is everybody's like this, but somebody helped them. So if you approach them correctly and you are humble and you are respectful, they'll give you 15 minutes of their time, unless they're a jerk, and there certainly are jerks. Um, don't be annoying. Is that more than five? That's more than five. That's okay. I'm enjoying this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I like what you say. And the thing is, is that I think these relationships, they take time. Yes. And so we're in such a fast world right. that it, it can't just be you meet someone at a mixer, yes. get their card or their contact info, and now you have the, this ask. Yes. What I say, and this I firmly believe in. First of all, I hate the word networking. It makes me feel icky to even say it. I like the word connecting. If you make a genuine connection with somebody, then follow that up. Um, don't ask somebody for something when you don't know them. Think about if you were working and somebody said to you, I know you got a full-time job, but will you do X for me? It'll only take you an hour and a half. Um, I always say, and this is in my book, it's in my blogs, it's the correct Hollywood ask. You ask somebody for something, but you give them a gracious way out. So you might say, I know you're incredibly busy, but would you have the time to do X? If you have the time, would you do X? Is there somebody, I know how busy you are, is there somebody in your office that would be willing to X, look at my script, give me some thoughts on it. Um, when you ask somebody to read your script, don't ask them for detailed notes. Just say, I'd love your general opinion of it because that makes it just an hour read instead of a two hour endeavor because nobody in the entertainment industry wants to say no to you because they don't know. Unless they're a jerk, again, they're a jerk. They don't want to say no to you because someday they may be working for you or looking for a job from you. So make it so that it's easy for them to decline if they have to. What are the assumptions most new writers get wrong about the business? That everybody's awful, that nobody wants to help them, and that's often because they don't know how to do what we talked about, the soft Hollywood ask that it's easy. I think that's a big assumption that newcomers have, that it's easy. They read a story about one person who made it like that and they think that's going to be them. Um, they assume they don't have to do a lot of work, that somebody will like them enough that they'll go, okay, you keep, yeah, I like you, I'm gonna hire you and, and let you get better while I pay you. That would be a bad assumption. What are some common excuses you hear from new writers, whether they're bad at pitching themselves or, you know, things about the entertainment industry that are, that you see, you know what, you're, you're putting up roadblocks, you're, you're making right. excuses. If you're bitter 
and you don't like people and you think everybody's out to get me, that will not help you. If you think I'm just in it for what I can get and not how I can help somebody, that's a problem because that generosity of spirit goes so far. It really does. I always say, be kind. There's no downside to being kind. And you never know who you're going to be kind to, who later on will go, wow, that person was kind. I want to help them. Sure. I'm, I'm all for kindness, but you can also be stepped on and taken advantage of. True. Don't be a doormat. Don't be a doormat. It is having confidence without being a jerk. It is having a belief in yourself without being annoying. And when you have that, you can think about how you can help somebody else and not get stepped on. And you have to have self-esteem. This business, it, it may feel like it's kind of wearing you down, but you have to have self-esteem in order to put yourself out there, in order to sell something, in order to sell yourself. I think a small bit of delusion helps though. Sure. Because if you're too aware of the odds, you'll never do anything. Here's what I say. People break in every day. Why not you? And that's what you should tell yourself. Somebody's breaking in today. Why not me? Well, maybe because you haven't done the work. It may be because something else. But if you have and you're truly ready, why not you? Keep that in mind. And you mentioned bitterness. And although that word is, is definitely a negative, I think there's a healthy sense of putting up some boundary. Sure. Because if you're too open and you're too fresh off the bus and you think this is all wonderful and, and take things at face value, you're going to learn very quickly that's not how right. it is. You, you should be mindful. You should read the room, read the business, and not lead with your heart on your sleeve. That doesn't help you. It ne you need to make sure that it's sort of a safe place to do that. And I think that if you're a puppy dog, oh my, oh my, oh my, um, that will not serve you. But if you're genuinely enthusiastic with confidence, that will serve you. People love passion and enthusiasm. But if you're, oh my, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, that's going to be a problem. A vetted writer versus an extremely talented writer. Which one is going to succeed? The vetted writer. Because you have to have a level of talent in order for people to want to help you, to recognize your talent. Somebody with raw talent, let me tell you, talent is important, but it's not the most important thing. It's whether people want to help you, whether you are generous. I talked about generous. It's whether you're meeting enough people. It's about, do you have the right work ethic? It's do people want to be around you? The most brilliant writer isn't necessarily the one that's going to get traction. You need all the other parts of the business, the other parts of the whole in order to succeed. Raw talent is a fabulous place to start, but you have to know what the business is and know what else is needed.